We're going to try to share with you one man, one shovel, and a dream here in this open field as we start to build in a church here. He had a dream and then spoke to me and then they sent a preacher in and then we had talked with him in the mission field before. He said he wanted to build a church. I didn't think there's any way, but we gave him a tent and let him start working, seeing what he could do to build up a congregation. A great worker for God. This is he and his wife. They labor very, very hard uh, in the mission field. We appreciate uh, what they do for God and how that God moves uh, in a great supernatural way. And uh, we just thank God for our missionaries in the field, how they labor for God and labor so hard. And uh, his wife, they feed the people, uh, clothe the people. And here we are now. Uh, putting up a tent, or they are, they're putting up the tent that we give them, and we're just going to start this journey, hoping that it'll be a blessing to you. few people come, and then as they begin to teach the Word of God, uh, they begin to feed the people, give people food, they're hungry, hunger people there, and as they come in, as you see a small crowd, you got to begin to see how they labor for God in 100 degree weather out there. One man, one dream, one shovel, and five cement blocks that he started with. Digging and saying, I'm going to have a church here to win souls for God. We sent them money, they bought steel and started putting it in. Bought cement and uh, bags of cement. The uh, rods that you see sticking up is going in to build the corner uh, of the church. And here they put the steel in the footing. Uh, to build a good foundation. That's the way Christians should do, is build a good foundation. If you build a good foundation, the devil can't shake you at all. Amen. And so now here they are building the footing as we send them money in. They labor very, very hard uh, on it in, in the hot sun. Can you imagine out in the hot sun as they labor for God? This is as much as preaching the gospel. Uh, they're getting a place for the people to come and worship the Lord. They lay all the steel. I'm sure that you builders are familiar with all this. Uh, and then the cement blocks begin to come in. And uh, as they labored in the middle of a field, can you imagine? Just a man with five cement blocks is what he started with. A dream and a vision. And uh, we pay him every month. We build other churches for him. And he's labored so hard. Then they put up a little tent. And uh, then the wife gets out there and goes to teach in Sunday school. And you imagine to kids who do not know, people who do not know, been taught uh, unreal doctrine, witchcraft, and everything else. And here we're teaching, you must be born again into the family of God. You must be born again. Well, the crowds are beginning to grow. And as they grow out in the hot sun, would you do that? Would you come and sit in the hot sun to listen to the precious Word of God? This tells you that they'll hunger for the Word of God. They sang the songs of Zion, got them a little uh, amplifier, battery operated there. She was faithful. Now, this, uh, it, it takes uh, some over two years over two years building this church. Wind, rain, but it didn't stop them. They're going to praise the Lord and labor together. One man, one woman. God is a pilot of their life. The cement blots, the walls begin to go up. As the walls go up, little by little, we didn't have all, we didn't have the money. You'd just come in, begin to uh, little by little, Brother Philip, his congregation, people kill as we started this work for God. Well, we was out of blots, and he said, give me some blots. I got out and raised the funds and uh, got them some more cement blots in. Well, now they're laboring on, got to be a pretty good-sized church. The sister's singing, laboring in the harvest field. There's a preacher's wife. She loves God. The pastor standing back with his hands raised, asking God, 
Asking God for more food, more clothes. We buy our clothes there. We buy our toys there in the mission field. We work in five countries. Men come out and labor. Labor hard. Missionary. Uh, we've been working with this man for a long time. He done laid two blocks. You see the blocks fresh there on top. Then they'll let the sun cure and Then they'll come back and lay three. Well, we got the walls up. And, uh, people... Look at the uh, dear people coming out. Uh, I'm sure Brother Philip knows about putting that steel up there. Uh, here he goes, it's going on up. The children get in here and start laboring for the Lord. Cold weather, you can tell it's getting cold now. They're inside, the wind can't get to them, the sun and the rain can. As we go back and in, they're running electric through the cement block. On and on, Brother Bastos, laboring for God. There's Steve and the interpreter. The interpreter's one of the pastors there. Well, they're preaching the gospel. We're there over two years, over two years. It took trying for the Bastos. He heads up all of our mission work. Children come in. Receiving from the Lord. They're precious people. They wouldn't get the word of the Lord if somebody like us and somebody like you weren't together in unity. Now it's Christmas time. Still no roof on the church. He loves the Lord. I wish you could see where he lives. There's his mom. Well, again, they just come and pray step by step. That the job will get done. Well, time for church again. And as they labor so hard. Well, we got the walls up. Now it's time to raise money for steel and metal. It costs a lot of money. They labor. They labor. Jesus said, pray ye therefore the Lord of harvest to send labors. They're doing just as much as I would do in the pulpit because they're getting ready for a move of God. Getting ready to talk. Well, they're about to run out of ten. He says we're all out of metal. This is a special metal. It'll last for a long time. Well, they wait patiently while we go and say, what can we do? God help us. And I begin to pray. Somebody would have a Sunday school uh, Bible for the children. And as they had that, they would send the children to get out and raise money. I'd send the money in. Now here they are, still waiting on the medal, still praying. Brother Morgan, we're praying. They'd send letters. They'd get together. So we had a prayer meeting. And I, I would, just as quick as I got enough money in, I'd send it where they could go buy more medals. Walls are up, ready for the windows, ready for the floor. They didn't want long until I sent the money in. The roof got up. Oh, they're so happy. Laboring for God. Don't look like much to you, does it? But a great soul-saving station is here. Well, it come time, they had it painted now. Didn't have it all finished. We had the windows in, doors in, cement floor poured. We dedicated it to the Lord. Brother Pappy came out and I cut the ribbon and we went in. Here it is inside now. They take a lot of pride uh, in their church, laboring hard. Still a lot of things to be done, but the church is dedicated now. Souls are being saved and born again. This is my heart. This is where I belong with people who I grew up very, very poor. I feel for them. If you've never been through a valley, you don't know how that person feels going through a valley. Alder service, them weeping and crying. Trust in God. They like for you to lay hands. Her head was so hot. Fever. Have you ever been sitting in a mission field? No. I've eaten their food, laid hands on them, went in, sick folk. God's been so good. These girls to stand a chance of being raped. A lot of rapery going on there. But they come to the house of God. Pastor's wife, 
preaching the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, Brother Joe's with us there, having a great time in the Lord. Well, the church has been established. These kids know Jesus as a personal Savior. They've been baptized, and you have a part in this field. There's Pappy there. He's laboring for God. Somebody give me this truck, and I took it down to Pappy. It's a diesel truck, and uh, he's hauling food. He hauls food in there. We just thank God for each one that has been a part of this mission journey of building a church. And uh, we buy food all the time. We send them money in. A man with a dream and a vision. Now the church is established over it. Now we just showed you the kids, but there's grown people there also. Over a hundred now, and we over a hundred uh, worshiping God and trusting God. Thank you for your faithful support of helping Preacher Morgan build another church for the kingdom of God. It's no secret what God can do.